Talking Talks, yes. and I'm going to be mm -hmm. talking to you about a kid's guide to U.S. government. Um, so today it's going to be mostly about kind of history, how the nation got started, the Constitution, Declaration of Defense, all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, so some of it might be a little bit of um, hopefully most of it will be some new stuff. Now, you might be wondering why a 12-year-old is teaching you today. My name is Doris Vitoff, and at the age of seven, I published my first book called Blind Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published a second book called Dancing Fingers, which is a book of poetry that I co-authored with my older sister. Now, U.S. government is something that I've always been really interested in, uh, as well as politics. Um, for one, I love to watch the news and see what's going on, and it's really interesting to see how history has affected that. So, uh, let's start with a question. If you were going to build a house, what would you want to do first? Anyone? If you were going to build a house, what would you want to do first? Parents had been king, 
kings or queens, um, and, and so they got that by hereditary right. Now, uh, that's British citizens. American colonists had even less power to decide their own fate, but they still had to pay taxes. So Americans had to pay these taxes, but they often didn't have any say in how the money was spent. So if the king had won it, he could have taken their hard-earned money and spent it playing a poker game, and they wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. So let me put this a different way. How many of you pay rent to your parents? Raise your hand if you pay rent to your parents. I'm not seeing too many raised hands. Uh, how many of you pay for your part of the groceries each week? What about the garbage and electric bills? Or... So, now, how many of you get to help make important family decisions? Raise your hand if you get to help make important family decisions. I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. Um, so now, if you think, if you kind of reverse that, imagine that you have to pay the garbage and electric bills. Imagine that you have to pay rent, and you have to pay for your part of the groceries each week, and you don't get to have any say in decisions. That was kind of how the American colonists felt back in the 1700s. So I get to help my family make some decisions, and I don't have to pay rent or garbage or electric bills. Um, and, and so imagine how much worse it would be if you had to pay all those things and you didn't get to make any decisions. And that was why, in 1775, American colonists, led by George Washington, rebelled against the British. So you guys probably know about this, uh, something called the American Revolution. The colonists didn't just lead on the battlefield. People like Thomas Paine wrote important works that helped raise awareness about the American cause. Benjamin Franklin worked as an ambassador to France to raise funds. An ambassador is an official representative of an organization, a government, a movement. Um, and Patrick Henry gave speeches about the fight for freedom. In one of his most famous speeches, he said, Give me liberty or give me death. As the revolution raged on, a group of colonists published the Declaration of Independence. Anyone want to tell me who wrote the Declaration of Independence? It's first draft. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, exactly. Uh, so, although the Declaration of Independence was not a blueprint for government, it outlined the basic ideas and values that would become guiding principles for the creation of our government. So it said that everyone had the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which was one of the really basic tenets of um, the, the new nation. Now the Declaration of Independence explained why the colonists were rebelling against the British and what their goals were. So here were some of the complaints they had about the king. One, he vetoes many laws that would be helpful to the colonists. Two, he dissolves colonial legislatures when they stand up for the rights of the people. So he gets rid of these colonial legislatures when they stand up for the rights of the people. He controls all the judges. Why might the king controlling all of the judges be bad? He gets what he wants. He gets what he wants, exactly. If you control the judges, let's say, um, hypothetically, that someone you know goes to court, um, which is very possible, it might happen, but you control the judge. So you might tell them, okay, I like this person, just let them get off. Or if you really don't like someone and they go to court, then you'll be like, oh, make them stay um, in prison for life. So if you control the judges, you would have that power um, and really make them do what you want, exactly. And it might not be the best thing for the colonists. He controls American trade and limits our trade opportunities. So he decides what trade comes in, what trade goes out. He destroys our useful rules and laws on a whim. So what is the kind of um, idea you get about the king from here? What basically uh, is the kind of theme of all of these? What do all of these complaints about the king have in common? It benefits himself. Yeah, what the king does benefits himself. Exactly. And another thing is that what the king does always seems not to take into consideration what it might do for the colonists, whether it would benefit them, whether it wouldn't benefit them. So, for instance, he vetoes many laws that would be helpful to the colonists. He dissolves colonial legislatures when they are standing up for the rights of the people. He controls American trade and limits our trade opportunities and destroys our useful laws. So pretty much anything that's beneficial for the colonists, the king doesn't like. That's sort of what you get from looking at their complaints against the king. So here's a group activity. Let's write our own kind of Declaration of Independence together so we can 
um, choose a topic to write about. We could make a list of grievances about the tyranny of adults, why kids should have more rights, or a different topic. What do you think?
kids aren't able to do. You think they should.
So what might be, what, uh, where would the trouble come in if each state had its own system of government, money, and rules? Um, it would get complicated. <laughs> it would get complicated. Okay, so what state are you guys in? <laughs> what? What state are you guys in? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, great. So, have any of you ever traveled, like, to Illinois or to a neighboring state? Kind of people might try to take power. How do we 
um, make sure that the powers are separated. Um, and those were just a few of the things that they thought about. So the Constitution is really the blueprint for our government. The main body of the Constitution outlines the three branches of government, describes how people will elect their representatives, and defines how much power each branch of government can have. The Constitution has allowed us to become a world superpower, and the freedoms it guarantees have encouraged us to become one of the most creative, diverse, and forward-thinking societies in the world. Now, if that sounds awfully high and mighty, I'd like to point out that the Constitution is more than the story of really pompous words and flowery concepts. It's also, um, it's the story of people, beginning with the Founding Fathers themselves, who have really interesting stories. So, for instance, did you know that James Madison, an architect of the Constitution, um, and the nation's fourth president, was said to look like a poodle? Or that Aaron Burr, who was vice president under Thomas Jefferson, killed Alexander Hamilton, another important architect of the Constitution, in a duel. So these founding fathers had really interesting histories. And these are just a few of the things that you touch upon when you look at the Constitution, when you look at the history of U.S. government. Or that George Washington's false teeth were made of hippopotamus ivory. So we have this blueprint, the Constitution, because the founders of our country made choices. They chose to fight for their beliefs, but more importantly, they chose to plan ahead. They wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution really helped to plan for today's government. So what do you think America would be like if they hadn't planned ahead? around that time period. 
So all of these amendments, uh, these, these are the first few, and, and you will find uh, many more. And a great website, if you want to read the whole, con oops. Um, sorry, the whole Constitution and the Bill of Rights, is you can go to Charters of Freedom, um, the Charters of Freedom website. That's the National Archives, so archives.gov. Um, and then that has the full text of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. So if you go there... Bill of Rights, and you'll be able to see uh, quite a few of them, as well as learn more about some of the people who created the Constitution. So, great website. Um, and uh, another thing that the Constitution talks about is what parts of the government do what. So, for instance, the Senate, the House, the um, so the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. So, uh, would anyone like to tell me what they know about the legislative branch? Present. 
Uh, a majority of the representatives select yes, and the bill passes in the U.S. House of Representatives. The bill is then certified by the clerk of the House. The bill is sent to the U.S. Senate, where it goes through many of the steps it went through in the U.S. House of Representatives. The bill is discussed in the Senate committee, but no changes are made. Then, the senators vote on the bill. In the U.S. Senate, senators vote by voice. Those, so, um, what's the difference between how the senators do it and how the representatives do it?
Washington. How hot is it right now? It is pretty awful. It is uh, foggy and rainy, and I would say maybe 40 degrees, 50 degrees. Not great.
um, saw the Supreme Court. It's definitely a really fun opportunity. Yeah, so that should be uh, really fun for you guys. Um, now, last time I was in Wisconsin, I was in Kenosha, and um, also I went to Milwaukee a little bit. Anyway, uh, there was a there was a tornado, and that was pretty crazy because I had never been in a tornado before, and I think that's something. I mean. A lot of, I guess a lot of states have tornadoes, but like Washington State, never. So that was, that was pretty neat. Okay, so, um, any last questions? Did your mom and dad home? <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom's home, my dad's at work. Uh, she's actually upstairs. Otherwise, I would, I would get her to come down and I would like zoom in on her and, and she could say hello. Sometimes I do that, it really creeps everyone out. It's, that's, that's fun. Um, what's your sister's name that helped you publish um, your second story? Your oh, my, uh, my second book is called Dancing Fingers. It's a book of poetry. And my older sister is Adriana. She actually has her own website, adrianasvtalk.com, and Adriana with two M's. Um, and, and so she contributed poems to this book. So it's uh, uh, a lot of my poems, and then you will find her poems toward the back will be Adriana's poems. So that's kind of cool. And her poems are um, quite a bit different from mine. Hers are the more freeform style, and mine are, you know, rhyming and structured. So you can see the different types of poetry. It's a good um, comparison. Any other questions? How old? How old is your sister? She's fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So you were like six when you published your first book. Seven. 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 Oh. <laughs>